midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises, and they experienced a suddenly end and immediately. Hey, everybody, thanks for being here again this time, whether you're actually watching at midnight or if it's 12 noon or if it's Monday in the middle of the day, whenever it is, I hope that you are waiting and expecting God to do something great in your life. I want to share a clip with you from the 2021 Speak Life e-conference. This is Pastor Karen Witherspoon, happens to be my cousin, and an anointed woman of God with a dynamic testimony of healing and deliverance. God bless you, enjoy, and I hope to visit with you again next week. All right, ladies and gents, if there be any, we are so happy that all of you have joined us for Speak Life 2021. I have a testimony, and boy, do I have a dynamite woman of God that is going to be our first speaker. She is a native of Southern New Jersey. She's the youngest of three. She's a mother. She's a wife. She's a retired educator, over 30 years of teaching experience. She is a warrior, a woman of God. She's a pastor. She is the pastor of Faith um, Lord. She is the pastor of Faith Fellowship Church of Glassboro. And so without further ado, today, this evening, you will hear from this singer. I mean, I, I have so many adjectives because not only do I know her as a woman of God, but she's my family. My cousin, my God sister, the anointed one, Pastor Karen Rose Nichols Witherspoon. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, Evangelist Lewis, who is the founder, I had to write this down, of Determined to Live Enterprises, which I want to tell you is it's a blessing. If you haven't had an opportunity to watch in the episodes, go back because the word never gets old. Encouragement never gets old. And I, I was greatly encouraged just a few days ago, greatly encouraged. Um, I want to congratulate you on this Speak Life on for, for 2021. Thank God. For, I guess there have been former ones that I was not aware of, but I want to congratulate you on this e-conference and I'm praying that the Lord will bless it and that your listeners will go away encouraged, uplifted, fortified, all of that good stuff. Um, based on what was shared with me. I'll just take a few minutes here and I'm watching my time too, because I, I know my limit. Um, in 2014, and I want to say you added a lot more than I gave you <laughs> for an introduction, a whole lot more, but to God be the glory. Um, fourth stage breast cancer. I was diagnosed with this in June of 2014. If you were to ask me, was I aware of it ahead of time, aware of cancer? No, I did feel um, a lump in my breast. And I, I'm going to be very honest with you. Being the prayer warrior that I was slash am, my desire to see the healing power of God flowing through and with his people, I want to tell you, I just begin to re rebuke it on such a regular basis and take authority and speak the word of God. And it just, it didn't go away. Let's put it like that. It didn't go away. So what drove me to do something about it was the amount of pain that I was in. Uh, I have a large toleration, a uh, large tolerance of pain. And so I didn't pursue anything immediately. But when I did go, it was diagnosed as fourth stage breast cancer. So at this time, I want to say that the uh, tumor had grown to the size of my fist. And it was just as hard as my fist. And so when, when they saw what it was, basically it had exploded. The whole breast had exploded. And the odor was horrendous. And so it was very hard to go out and be around people. Uh, you know, I spent a lot of time at home, but I made my way to the house of God. The, the house of the Lord was one place I was going to go. And so I did. Um, they diagnosed it as metastatic, which means that it would uh, go into other areas. It would spread. And so it was in my liver. 
It was in the L3. It was in the L5. I'm talking those discs in my spine. It was in my sternum. It was in my throat. And um, <clears throat> I didn't mention my liver. Okay. And so as time went on, uh, they were having, I guess, some difficulty in trying to figure out how they were going to deal with this. They knew right away, what did they call it? Aggressive. She needed an aggressive treatment. So what she considered aggressive, they started. But I let her know immediately that I was a believer. Hallelujah. I put the word behind it. And I said, I know you're doing what you can do. I said, but I'm praying. You have to understand there's prayer going along with this. And I have people who are believing God with me. So as time went on, and I went to see the, um, what was he, the wound care doctor. Well, what he gave me was pure honey. And it was in a strip. As I began to apply that pure honey every day, I want to tell you within nine months, it had gone down to the size of a nickel and this man could not believe it. Um, when he looked at it, he started using all these superlatives that aren't very nice at all, but it was the only way he could describe what he was looking at because he didn't know what to say. So when he finished, I looked at him, I said, how about to God be the glory for the great things he has done? And he said, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Well, I just looked at him and bust out <laughs> I said those words, those words, more Jesus, those words, those words didn't match, but God was on the move. But I'll have to tell you during this time, I tried to recall some of those things. I was very weak. I was under a hundred pounds. I lost a lot of weight. Um, I had no appetite. I hated the smell of food. Um, I couldn't lift my hands at all. I had no control over my bowels. There was vomiting from the chemo. Um, it took out my hair. Um, I had, I mean, my eyelashes, the little bit I had on my hands or all my arms, all the hair, all my legs, all the hair was gone. Um, my skin color began to get darker. I couldn't dress myself. Um, medicine that they had me on, one set of medicine they gave me had me hallucinating. And I began to see things. I began to say things that didn't make sense. I, people would be conversating and I would start talking. It had nothing to do with what was going on. Um, and so my daughter really didn't want me to go out at all because she said, mommy, like until, until you can get a handle on this, she said, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't know what you're saying. We don't even know what you're seeing. You know, we could be watching something on TV and I was seeing something completely different than what everybody else was looking at. It, it was, it was something. Um, I had a fever for nine days that they were not able to break. I had just gone in for routine chemo and they couldn't break the fever. So I wound up staying in CTCA, Cancer Treatment Center of America in Philadelphia. I was there for nine days and every day in the morning, the doctor would come in. Now this wasn't the oncologist, but this was someone on her staff. He would come in and the first words out of his mouth were, so what do you want first? The good news or the bad news? Not good morning, Mrs. Witherspoon. How are you feeling today? None of that. He said, so what do you want first? The good news or the bad news? And I thought to myself, if I had to depend on the words of a doctor or a doctor's attitude or their aura to decide whether or not life was worth living, I would have been in trouble with this dude right here. I would have been in major trouble, but to God be the glory. When I had this infection, it, the fever dropped in nine days, but for six weeks, for 42 days, I was fighting a staph infection. I had the worst kind of staph infection you could have. It's the kind you get in your blood. And so I had, a, I had two ports put in. Both ports became infected. They put in a pick line. The pick line fell out after about two weeks or so. It just fell out of my arm. So the nurse was here cleaning my wound when the, when the pick line fell out. She called CTCA. The disease and infection doctor got on the phone and he said, well, I need to tell you, miss. He said, if you um, intend to fight this, you need to do such and such and such and such. Well, the nurse had already said to me, she said, did you know that there are pills you could be taking? I said, no, I didn't. I asked him about it. He said, well, I'll be honest with you. You can take them, but they're not going to work for you. You know, if you take them, you're not going to live. You won't make it because the pills alone won't be enough. I said, to, I said two things. Number one, I am not your guinea pig. 
I said, you're not going to keep just trying everything out on me. The second thing I said was, I want you to order those for me. And when he um, electron electronically sent the script, my uh, one of my teacher friends went and picked it up for me. I anointed that bottle of medicine with oil. And I said to the Lord, everything that they thought I needed intravenously, and if they didn't do it the way they wanted to do it wouldn't work, I said, everything that they said that these wouldn't do, I wanted to do that and more so that you can show that you are God. He told me it wouldn't work. I had to take probably six of those pills a day. They were huge. And it, I, I would almost throw them back up trying to get them down because they were so big. But God, and that's what I want to say. I had three blood transfusions. Um, I wound up with a Hickman, which is when instead of just having one line coming out, they had two lines coming out because I had had so many problems. They were trying to look out for these kinds of things. But what I wrote down that I found to be important was important was I had to know how to encourage myself in the Lord. And I began to look at the life of David from first Samuel chapter 30, because even after he'd done all he'd done for those men and to preserve the area where he lived and to take care of Israel, you know, they come back and their town has been taken. It's been burned down. Children are gone. Wives are gone. Everything they owned is gone. And now they're ready to kill him. They forgot all of the good. They forgot all of the training. They forgot how he stood in the gap for these people. You know, everything went out the window. They're ready to kill him. But what he did was he asked the priest for the ephod. Technically, this was how the, how the priest got in touch with God. And what I, what I felt I learned from David was there are some situations where you're going to have to know how to get in touch with God for yourself. I, I, um, if you want your healing, and you're in a, in a place where there's an attack on your body, I want to say this, you're going to have to be willing to make an investment. I had to, in, let's face it, any kind of investment you make is going to take time. It's going to take energy. It may take some research and even some learning or some educating of yourself. But what I chose to do was to make time for the word of God. Every day I read or listened to those healing scriptures. My mother sent me a host of healing scriptures. And listen, that woman was a woman of God who God healed. And so I took what she said very seriously. I would read those scriptures every day. You know, Isaiah 53 and 5, that he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Second Peter Chapter two says, by whose stripes you were healed, which means it was already done. And then I had John 19, 28. It says, and when Jesus knew that all things were accomplished, he said, I thirst. That word accomplished then when he knew all things were finished, all things were done, all things were complete. That word meant paid in full. He paid in full for every sickness, for every disease, for every infirmity, for every dis-ease, for every discomfort. I don't just mean physically. I mean, if something has attacked you mentally or emotionally, psychologically or intellectually, if something has attacked your body, listen, even attacked your mind, it's attacked your finances. The enemy tries to work in all kinds of ways. But I began to realize that when it says it was finished, it was like Jesus experienced it on the level of a 10. You go into the doctor's office and they'll say, on what scale is your pain? Jesus took that pain on the highest level it could have ever existed. And therefore, I begin to speak to my body. Did the pain go away right away? No. Hallelujah. Did the hurt go away right away? No. But I kept the word on my lips. I kept the word on my lips. Uh, Psalms 103, bless the Lord on my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. That word heal there means to cure. Hallelujah. When you need a cure, that means there's no answer. 
That means there's no solution. That means they don't know how to solve that problem. There's nothing that can go on in our lives that God has not already provided the healing for. I don't care what it is. The enemy wants us to think we're an isolated case. Nobody's going through this like you are. You're by yourself. Nobody else is going to understand. Not only did Jesus understand, but he made sure he experienced it. He wouldn't allow them to give him anything. Hallelujah. To numb that feeling until he knew exactly how this would feel on a 10 for Karen. Yes, Lord. How he would know how it would feel not to be able to have your toes touch the ground. You know, I couldn't just stand up. I would have to just tap the ground a little bit because it would shoot pains up my back where the cancer has started eating my bones. And so it would hurt to try to stand up. So I would have to tap the ground a little bit and then try to ease off the bed a little bit at a time. You know, I slept sitting up for three years and three months. I couldn't lay down at all, but I want to tell you what a mighty God we serve. I wouldn't trade him for anything. I wouldn't trade him for anybody. Proverbs 4.22 tells us that the words, God's word, he says, that is life to those who find it and it is health to all their flesh. The word life here means that it's going to bring us not just a spark, but it brings a refreshing. There's a refreshing that comes over us with the word of God. It's life to all those who find it. That means who take it, who sees it, who receive it. I received the word. Hallelujah. I didn't just say, you know what? That's just a bunch of, that's just a bunch of words on a piece of paper. You know, why should I keep saying that every day? You know, probably nothing is going to happen. And I have to insert this here while I'm here. A couple of months ago, I was watching uh, Joseph Prince and he deals very strongly in healing. As I'm sitting there watching, He shows the picture of a 10-year-old boy from India. His face is twisted and turned. It has turned dark. His eyes are closing, his cheeks, his whole face is swollen, his lips are twisted. It appeared to be like symptoms of a stroke. And so his family had called in all these specialists to look at him and were able to do nothing for this little boy. Just so happened, there was a missionary over in India who knew about Joseph Prince. And she began to tell them the importance of goosebumps of taking communion every day. They took communion and they began to take it every day and to declare God's blessing and what it represented as they took the communion. In 15 days, the little on the 15th day, when they took it, that boy's face straightened back up. His cheeks came back down. His eyes began to sit properly. His lips untwisted. Hallelujah. And what Joseph began to say is, you don't know where your 15th day is. Don't you let the devil cheat you out of your miracle, out of your blessing. Hallelujah. I'm believing God for miracles. Hallelujah. For signs and wonders. Hallelujah. I'm believing God for marvels, for things that don't make sense, that will be unbelievable, unexplainable, and undeniable. Nobody else will be able to take credit for what God does in your life except God. There will be nobody else's name to call because I'll be honest with you. Sometimes when people could, they don't. And that leaves you with God. Therefore, nobody else gets his glory. Nobody else gets his praise. And I want to say, you never know what your 15th day is. Don't ever stop believing and trusting in God. So it's life to those who find it and it's health to all their flesh. The word literally will bring healing to your entire body, but you have to make the investment and you have to believe it. I want to say this. You have to be willing to keep the word on your lips. I have here. I begin to take the word as a medicine and there were days where I had to get those scriptures more than once a day and listen to them. Because when the pain would try to intensify, I had to fight back with the word of God. I had, I had, when it tried to dig in, I dug in with the word. I dug in with faith. I dug in with expectation. I dug in with anticipation. Hallelujah. I dug in with my belief and my faith in God. I had to do it. So the Lord began to say to me, he said, Karen, he said, now, as it becomes more intense, if it becomes more intense, You do what a regular medicine bottle will say, something to say once a day, twice a day, three times a day, and then sometimes when it was severe, as often as needed. And this is what I had to do with the word of God. I had to begin to take it as often as needed. So I began reading healing scriptures every day, and I would quote the word of God. I would speak the word of God. And I want to say to you, expectation is everything. You have to speak it out of your mouth. I'll never forget one of my cousins was sick at my house. One day, like during the summers, when I'm coming home from college, I would pray every morning at five o'clock, set my alarm, get out that bed and pray. 
as I was praying this one morning, I felt a presence. I felt, listen, I opened my eyes and she was standing there crying. I said, what's the matter? She said, my body hurts. I said to her, I said, Lori, all you need to say is by his stripes, I'm healed. She said to me, I'm in too much pain to speak the word of God. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I didn't give her a whole list. I said, just say by his stripes, I'm healed. She said, I'm hurting too bad to say the word. I'm hurting too bad to speak the word, but I'll take you a step further. Well, my aunt was in the hospital when Aunt Elizabeth Thomas Harvey, however you want to put it, was in that hospital. When she was sick, the preeclampsia had her at a point where she was starting to lose consciousness. And therefore, because of the high blood pressure, she was almost at the state of a coma. When she came back to church healed and began to testify, she said out of her own mouth, she said, I couldn't talk. She said, but I kept thinking, I shall not die. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. So I want to say this, even if you're at a point where you can't say it, think the word. Hallelujah. God can read your thoughts. Yes, God. If there are only days when tears will fall and the tears are saying, Lord, I believe you. This is hurting me, but I believe you. God can read your tears. Hallelujah. If all you can do is just lay and fall over, God can read your posture. He can read your body posture. He's not limited to the words coming out of your mouth. However you can reach him, reach him. Yes, God, but make a point that you go after God. I want to say, you have to learn how to speak over your body. If you're not sick and it's a different kind of concern you have, speak over your circumstance. For me, I spoke over my blood. I still do it. I speak over my cells. I speak over my tissues. I speak over my organs. I speak over the systems of my body. And I want them to know you are healed. Hallelujah. I will say this. Doctors have a job. Their job is to share information, but I put here, but make their information a prayer point, not the final say. Once they tell you what they tell you, I believe in praying specifics. Then that allows me to specifically address a situation and let God begin to work. Let him begin to give me, if I can give him the details, I don't want to leave anything out. You know, I've shared this story before when I was a little, little girl, when we were in the old church. A man came, his name was Elder Story. When he stood up to preach, there was this big knot on the top of his head. And as he began to preach, he began to share something with us. He began to talk to us about the importance of being specific with God. He said, I'm going to tell you all something. He said, I asked the Lord to move it. He said, it used to be on my neck. He said, God moved it. He did what I asked him to do. He said, I didn't ask him to take it away. I just said, move it. You know what? It taught me as a, as a young girl. How to be specific. You may think that's overboard, so be it. But I want to tell you, the more specific you are, the more specific results you can get from God. If you lay it out like you want it, hallelujah, God can meet you at the point of that need, just like you said it. I've I've been looking at this woman with the issue of blood. There were things she said in her mind. She said, and if I can but touch. And when she touched, she said, I believe I'll be made whole. She said, I will be made whole. When Jesus asked who touched him because he felt that virtue went out of him. Now it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But I like the way Luke began to look at it because if I have the right one correct, he began to say that when Jesus answered her, he said, your faith has made you whole. What the, you said you'd be made whole? Guess what you got? You got being made whole. Whole was more than just her physical healing. Listen to me. She couldn't be around people. She's now isolated from people. People don't want her around. She's not wanted around certain people. This woman, as I heard one person put it, it took her 12 years to lose all her money. For 12 years, she was going to these doctors, all of these specialists. People were supposed to know how to deal with whatever she was dealing with. She spent all of this money and this money is now gone. Look at all of these areas where God had to make her whole. It was more than her just having her health back. Hallelujah. God was concerned about her finances. He was concerned about her social life. He was concerned about her mentality and her emotional being after being in this state and not being around people and not people wanting her around them and and not supposed to be within certain parameters of people. Or if you're going to get near people, let them know that you're coming in their direction. I mean, she's been through the mill. Oh, but when God healed her, when she was healed, it was just more than than him stopping the flow. But it was him making her completely whole. He was concerned about every area. When you talk about being whole, God is concerned about you. He's concerned about whole very often is attached to salvation. If you see those two words, you'll see 
when you're talking about being whole, he wants you healed. He wants you well. He wants you safe. He wants you rested. He, look it up for yourself. He wants you calm. I'm looking at all of these things that he wants for us. He wants you prosperous, which means it's not just about money. It makes no sense to have money and you're in no state to enjoy it. You can't move. You can't walk. You can't think. You know, somebody's trying to feed you. You can't, you can't wash this. You can't do it for yourself. You can't enjoy it. I want to say when he says whole, God is concerned about every area of your life. Every area. Now, I want to say for this, when I begin to pray, I, somebody asked me last year to come on and to talk about it on something that they had. And as I was sharing, as I was preparing, the Lord said to me, from this day forward, he said, do not say you are in remission. He said, you declare remittance. Remission is the possibility of it coming back. They feel like it, there's that chance. But when something is remitted, it's canceled. It is done away with. The Lord said to me, don't say remission. You say remittance. And I want to tell you, that's what I say every day. Father, I thank you for remitting this cancer, not being in remission, but remittance of this cancer. The Lord said to me, and don't say metastatic. He said, you say manifestation of healing. He said, don't say metastatic. It doesn't spread another place. Hallelujah. He said, you say out of your mouth that there is manifestation of the healing power of God. Hallelujah. Have I had to do things to keep my health defended? I certainly have. Hallelujah. I, I keep the word of God. You know what? It, it, I'm, I'm cautious now of things that I eat. Yes, I am. I'm cautious of some things that I have to leave alone. And I want to tell you, some things require that you become educated and that you learn. And when you do what you know to do, my prayer is, God, I thank you for adding your super to my natural. What I know to do in the natural, I will do. But what I don't know to do, hallelujah, I release the Holy Spirit to enlighten me and to show me. The sevenfold spirit resting on Jesus, I would declare it over me. Um, if you look at Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, hallelujah, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And there's one word of spirit of my, Give me a minute. Spirit of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit for heaven's sakes. Jesus, help me right now. All right. That's the sevenfold spirit. I'm beginning to say to him, wisdom is in me. I said, knowledge is in me. I said, understanding is in me. I said, because you are in me. I release the Holy Spirit in me, hallelujah, to reveal to me what I need to do. And what I need to stop doing, what I need to eat and what I need to stop eating. And I want to tell you, if you want to live, I begin to declare over my palate, you will desire those things that are good for you. You will desire those things that bring health to you. You will desire those things that enrich your blood and make your blood what it should be. And I have to tell you, when I was going there and I was getting that uh, chemo every three weeks, which they were calling maintenance. You know, one time I went and the nurse that I used to get was, she was on vacation. This woman came in there and I'm telling you, she just beat up and down my arm. I had never seen this machine that you put your arm under and then they try to look at your veins and see what they can find. She couldn't find one. She turned to me and she said, your veins are dead. She said, they're no good. She said, you need to get a port. Why are we going through this? I said, is there anybody else? Who can come do this? I said, because I'm not getting a port. I said, if you can't get it, then someone else can come in and do it. Well, somebody else did come in and found it just like that. When they, when I got ready to go down for the mastectomy, can I tell you, prayer is everything. When I got ready to go down for that, usually I'm probably there five minutes before I'm asleep. They couldn't find a vein. 45 minutes, I should have been halfway through the surgery. They were still trying to find a vein. All of these people came in. This one rough looking lady, she came and sat down and she said, well, if I can't find it, nobody can. I said, really? I said, okay, you have a nice day. She left. This old Caucasian tall man came in with his glasses, a little bent over. He rolled up his chair next to me and he said, before I do anything with anybody, he said, I always say, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. I finished it. I said, and he will direct your past. He said, you believe? I said, yes, I am. I knew he was going to get it. He got it just like that. But you know what? God has people everywhere 
Hallelujah. Even if you have to go to a doctor, pray. Ask God for the right doctor. Ask him to give them insight. You know, so I begin to speak and to say what God said to say, but I want to I want to share this with you. When when I was in the throngs of this, people would come pray. And I begin to pay attention to the prayers. And this one that I kept getting when it came, and Lord, we thank you that she's still in the land of the living. They come back the next week. And Lord, we thank you that she's still in the land of the living. And Lord, we thank you that she's still in the land of the living. After the third time when the person left, I said to Lord, where did I think I was going to be? I said, oh, okay. There's fear in here. People were coming to see me. Never came to my house. No, they thought they, thought they were getting their final visits in. That's what I pick up on stuff. The spirit of God, there's nothing dumb about the spirit of God. I didn't say anything to them, but the Lord said to me from that day forward, as weak as I was, he said to me every day, you open your mouth and you decree that if anybody's praying anything different from what you would say over you, he said, cancel it. He said, demand it to be decapitated by the spirit of God. He said, don't let whatever that is in the atmosphere. He said, because either you're giving the angels something to work with, or you're giving the prince of the power of the air something to work with. He said, I want the angels released on your behalf. He said, you need to open your mouth and say something. And so I would begin to pray. And I would say, Lord, I thank you for this day. And any prayer that's being uttered on my behalf, if it doesn't sound like me, praying over myself. If it doesn't sound like me standing in faith, if it doesn't sound like me quoting the word of God, if it doesn't sound like me believing you, hallelujah, if it doesn't sound like me expecting different, expecting victory, I said, I decapitate it in the name of Jesus. I said, I knock the head off it even now and I command it to fall down dead. I said, Father, I thank you that it is so. And I still have to do it now. I still have to do it now. I don't know who's going to watch this, but I got a birthday message and I only shared it with my daughter. But it, it bothered me. It says, I'm so glad I can say happy birthday and not rest in peace. I said, what? Where did that come from? I'm so glad I can say happy birthday. Mind you, that was seven years ago. And you're saying to me, you're glad that you're not. I said, okay. I said, well, then that's somebody else. that have to make sure I shut down whatever they're saying. Because something. Okay. I see a faith issue. Okay. I. And there have been issues and things that they've had to deal with. So maybe that's the case. But I want to say to you, you can't speak faith in front of people. And then when you get by yourself, you start talking doubt and fear. You start getting stressed and overly concerned. You know, people don't want you to say stressed. They don't want you to use that word. Okay. When people become overly concerned, all of a sudden, they're not so sure they believe God anymore. The scripture says that that double-minded man is not to think that he's going to receive anything from God. You can't get near with God when you believe today and by tomorrow morning, you're not sure anymore. You don't know where your 15th day is. And that's what I tell myself now. I, I don't care what I'm believing God for. Karen, you got a 15th day. Honey, you better keep holding on to God. You better keep expecting. You don't know where that day is. Don't you get the 14 and you get to the, 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 what is it, 23rd hour and then you fall apart all of a sudden. Not so. I will, I never, listen, the great Dr. David Thomas would say, you could be right on the verge of your blessing. And you need to take that next step, just like those doors open automatically. He said that door is waiting to open, but you don't take that next step. You feel like you've been taking so many steps. You feel like you've been, leave, been believing a hard time, a long time. You feel like you've been waiting a long time. And I want to tell you something. I have learned to take time out of my, out of my equations. I don't let time control anything anymore when I'm believing God. I thank him today for healing. I want to say uh, let me see. It was January the 2nd, 2020, when I got the last chemo. And there were some things that they were having problems with, I guess, with my insurance and uh, the finances of it and where they thought the money was going. They thought it was coming to me. It wasn't coming to me. When I finished talking to the oncologist, I went around to make an appointment and it's about a 30 second walk. By the time I walked those 30 seconds, they had wiped me out of the system. And I said, you know what, Lord? This is my time now to trust you like never before. I said, because these people had me coming every three weeks. I said, I don't have to wait every three weeks. Look, I done picked up something. I don't have to wait every three weeks to get in touch with you. I said, I can do this every day. So you know what I do now? They think I'm crazy. I take my blessed oil. And where they will put that IV, 
I rubbed that blessed oil in it. And then I started reading all through my scriptures. And I said, receive your chemo for the day. I said, there are no side effects. I said, you won't get sick from this. I said, you, you will be able to eat after you get this in you. I speak to every part of my body and said, do you understand what we're doing? We're standing on these scriptures. We're believing the word of God. Hallelujah. We are not compromising. We're, we are going to see manifestation. Hallelujah. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That word goodness literally in the Old Testament is signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm going to see them in the land of the living. How God is not done yet. There are more miracles to be had. Hallelujah. There are more blessings to be had. So I don't, I'm not going to go on any further. I've taken a good minute, but I just want somebody to be encouraged. It's going to be an investment. It's going to be an investment and you have to watch your surroundings. You know, I, there was one point and I'll say this where I had to, I sent out a mega message. I don't know if I put it on Facebook. I think I did that. I think I put it in a text. I said to family members, I thank you. You have gone with me as far as you can go. Some of you. I said, from this point on, because I'm not going to lie, it got worse before it got better. And I said, if for any reason, I said, you feel fearful or you feel afraid for me. I thank you for going with me as, as far as you could. I said, but the rest of this journey is for the fearless. I said, it's for the fearless. I, I can't have people around me who are worried. I can't, I can't have people around me who are waiting for me to drop. You know, every day you're going to be looking to see if I look smaller, if I look darker. I don't know. Not. So I want to say your surroundings are everything. Keep people around you. That, and I want to tell you something. It's a, it's a great way to build faith. I can't say that I had more teachers. I had more parents. They took me to all my appointments. They drove me. They knew everything about the doctor's stuff. They were writing it down. For God gave me my own Ezra's. He gave me my scribes. I still refer to those teachers as my scribes. They came here and they cooked. They cooked and fed me. They fed my family. There were certain things I needed. I didn't know what kind of foods and things I really needed to be eating. They did it. I mean, God placed people in my life. And I want to tell you, they by them being able to watch that miracle along with me, I believe it really built, built faith and trust in God in their lives to trust the Lord. And I close with this. God is concerned about every area. I, 2017, October, I, one early morning, I was sitting at my desk at school. My phone rang and it was a retired teacher. She said, Karen, you need to get out of there. She said, you need to retire. You need, you need to come out now. She said, it's not getting any easier. She said, and for your health, you need to come out of there just to keep yourself healthy and strong. She said, I'm going to send you a number. I want you to call these people and make an appointment. She said, if they can't take you down here where we live, she said, I will drive you to Trenton. She said, but when they give you a date, take the first date they have. She said, and you make sure that you call out now. She said, put your sick day in now. I'm taking you. I said, okay. I put the phone down. She went with me. When we got to the meeting in Malaga, this lady says to me, you can try if you want. But by, by you being sick, she said, and, and the oncology stuff, she said, you're not going to get it. She said, I can tell you now, you can try, but you're not going to get it. I'm, I'm looking at what you have here. She said, so I don't really worth, think it's worth your time. What do you think? I said, may I have the paperwork, please? I, see, God had another witness sitting there that was going to see what God could do. It's supposed to take about, you should hear something in a couple of months. Well, I did. I went December, December 11th. So. I checked in January. That was about a month, nothing. I checked again in February, about nothing. So I left alone. We get around to May. Okay, well, that's about six months. Uh, nothing. Okay, so I left it alone. July the 11th. Funny, something about the 11th. July 11th, I said, I'm going to call and talk to somebody. I called and the gentleman said, it's funny you should call today. Your information goes up before the board tomorrow. I said, okay, that means turn my plate down. I didn't say that to him, but I know what to do. Okay, I was, I was going to put some faith along with these words. I turned my plate down and the gentleman said, well, it's really going to take probably two weeks before you hear anything. That was a Thursday. Monday morning, I got a phone call. You have received your retirement. Now, I'm going to tell you, I typed that lady and that was in the office to thank her for her help. But I really wanted her to see, you don't have the final say. 
So I'm going to say to somebody, I don't care what the area of your life is. Sometimes God is trying to call people into ministry. And the Lord had one of my cousins. She would call me at least once. I don't know, every six months and say, you know, you're not supposed to be working. You're not supposed to be in full-time ministry. And I was like, I can't do that. I, I, I ran down all the bills that I carry and all the things that I'm responsible for. I said, I can't do that. She said, yes, you can. And I would tell the Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but you know what? God has a way and his timing is everything. So don't think he's just concerned about physical healing. I don't care what concerns you. It me If it means something to you, it means something to God. So I'm grateful today. I really want somebody encouraged to believe God, regardless to what it is, but be willing to make the investment, whatever that investment may be. And the enemy is going to try to make you think whatever it is, it's just going to take all your time. You can't do it. You know what? You can't afford not to do it. You can't afford not to do it. But I thank you for this space. And may the body of Christ be greatly encouraged to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him. And he will direct your paths. I thank you, woman of God, for this space. That's enough. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I am so overwhelmed sitting over here. It's been a lot to just remain in my chair. I think if we were in a live setting, I'd probably be along with some other people all over the <laughs> building right about now. But before we um, just dismiss you, I really would love for you to pray. If you would just pray for the people, a general prayer, however the Lord leads you. If you would go ahead and pray. Yes, Father, we thank you and to give you glory. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, to even talk about your greatness. Hallelujah. To talk about your awesomeness. To talk about how there is no one like you in all the earth. Father, I thank you today because I'm a firm believer in John 18. Because you said that when he knew that all things were accomplished. I don't know what the people of God are going through right now. But I know for a fact that Jesus carried it. Hallelujah. The scripture says he bore our sicknesses. He carried our pains. He carried our sorrows. He carried our bruises. God, even with bruising, it's when the blood and all that is, is, is disrupted stays underneath. And there's some things people haven't even been able to share. Oh God, because of the intensity of the pain. But Lord, I'm asking you to read whatever needs to be read. Hallelujah, if it's their body language. Lord, if it's their tears. Hallelujah. However it is, if it's the words that's in their mind because their mouth can't even get the words out. I've been to a place where I couldn't even speak. Hallelujah. And all I could do was just think whatever it was and let the tears fall. God, I thank you today that you will honor that faith of that one that says, you know what? I'm going to trust God. Hallelujah. I pray that they will be in the right place at the right time to hear what they need to hear in order to start them in that direction towards healing and towards victory. God, for what, for which we give you all the glory and Lord, we thank you. We're not, I, I'm going to stand proxy and say, nobody else is going to get the credit for what you do. Nobody else is going to get the credit for what you work out. I speak signs, wonders, and miracles. I thank you for marvels. I thank you for extraordinary manifestations of the greatness of our God. I thank you that the goodness of the Lord shall be seen in the land of the living. And I decree that these things will be unbelievable, unexplainable, but yet undeniable. They would have to say only God could have done it. I thank you that unbelievers become believers because of what they see you do in the lives of your children. We thank you now, God, regardless to what's going on, let them know, God, that you care and that Jesus carried that hurt and that pain so that they don't have to. So I thank you that they'll even feel a lifting as I'm praying. Hallelujah. They will feel it lift off of them. Yes, God. And the joy of the Lord will be their strength. We give you glory for it now. Father, we even pray over this awesome ministry. And God, that doors, hallelujah, of opportunity would open however she desires to take it forward. That it, people would become aware of her because of what she's doing for you. And I thank you for the right people in the right places. Hallelujah, who can propel this ministry just where you want it to go. And blow her mind with your greatness, I pray. And all those that assist and work with her. 
In Jesus' awesome name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank God again for you. So glad you could be a part. Oh, my pleasure. Can you tell us about your design behind you? I can. Well, what you see is a, is a diamond. And I'll have to tell you, this was created for me, but this is what the Lord dropped in my spirit. I am a diamond in the rough. There's, there's nothing you know wonderful going on here but a yielded vessel. That's all that is here. But God has been speaking something global for a long time. I don't usually do things like this. Mm-hmm. I had to speak at a Queen's conference, mm-hmm. a Queen's banquet. Mm-hmm. This is what was given to me. I, I didn't get it until two Saturdays ago. Mm-hmm. But it says, read it, honey. It says, Queen's Banquet 2021, Preacher of the Year. I'm going to tell you why he said this, because as the pandemic hit and things became more difficult for people, God began to make things easier for me. And somebody else literally picked up on it and saw it. He said, God said to get it for you. Now, I'm going to tell you, I may not personally go to these other countries, but while I have been on the lives, there have been people from other countries that have been watching. Afghanistan has been watching. Italy has been watching. I Because when I would have music on, it would say people watching from other countries, they can't play this music since it isn't your music. But once I start talking, they would let it clue in or click in so that they could hear. And of course, you've got the breast cancer. That's their sign there for the healing. But thank God, the major and the biggest of all is the word of God. Amen. And that's that's what my life centers around. Truly, it is what my life centers around. I thank you for asking. No one has ever done that. But that's what that's all about. But God, God is getting it out. It's not about me traveling and people seeing and know, knowing who I am. I just want the word to reach his people. Amen. It's Amen. all for the glory of God. Thank you Amen. so much, so much for sharing. And uh-huh. I hope that um, since this is virtual, that you will be able to tune in. We share the day, July 20th. Yes, we do. As it is my birthday, it is your wedding anniversary. Yes, it is. So I know you'll be celebrating, but I hope at some point you will get a chance to view everything that the Lord brings forth on that evening. God bless you and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Blessings to you, woman of God.